Hello, I'm Becky Henning with MSU Extension or Michigan State University Extension. And I'm Amy Prins, a program instructor with Michigan State University Extension. And today we're going to talk about squash and the availability of winter and summer squash. But first, Amy, tell me a little bit about this um, icon, which is uh, used to be our food guide pyramid, but now we've switched over to the USDA MyPlate. So could you tell me a little bit what it means? Sure, Becky. Um, the United States Department of Agriculture has recommended with MyPlate that half of our plate be fruits and vegetables. And a wonderful way to get those vegetables on your plate is with squash. Um, did you know that there's two different types of squash? Fantastic. What, what are those two types of squash? The squash, Becky, are winter squash and summer squash. And with the winter squash, which we're going to show today on how to cut and actually use it in a recipe, okay, a little bit later, but first let's talk about the different types of squash we have. You might have seen these in your farmer's market or maybe at your local grocery store, and they might look a little difficult, don't they? Oh, you know what? The, the reason I avoid these winter squash is because of the tough external rind, and, and the cutting is so very difficult for me. I'm going to show you a technique today, Becky, Fantastic. that you can take home with you, and you won't be scared of these any longer. So the difference between your summer and winter squash, though, is you can eat the outside of a summer squash. This is a yellow squash. We have a zucchini. I never take the outer coats of these off, okay? Um, but... I don't think we want to eat the exterior of the hard squash or the winter no. squash, do we? No. No. Okay. So, Becky, we do have different characteristics in different types of winter squashes that we can choose. This is a butternut squash. Mm -hmm. We do also have a buttercup squash. Mm -hmm. You've seen the acorn squash before. I have. Okay. And our summer squash, we do have yellow squash and a zucchini squash. Okay. When we're choosing our squashes at the farmer's market or in the store, we want to look for an exterior that is firm to the touch. We want to look for any dents because we don't want to buy that squash. Um, because those dents can make the squash not last as long, and we don't want to eat a squash that isn't fresh, correct? Definitely. Okay. So, Amy, tell me, when would I see these potentially in my grocery store? Because if I'm not mistaken, I'm seeing these most of the year. Correct. But tell me a little bit about when they're available, maybe in my farmer's market, and when they're most fresh. Okay. Our summer squash are typically going to be available in your farmer's market, and they'll be fresh in your grocery store anywhere from July through September. Okay. Okay. Um, our winter squash is typically available anytime September through December. But the one lovely thing about winter squash is that they will store up to three months, if not longer, if you keep them in a dry, cool area like a cellar from 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Great. Okay. One of the resources that you might be able to pull up on your internet if you have internet availability, if you were to Google the Michigan Availability Guide, it will pop up as um, a selection for you, and it will give you a reference on the months and uh, time frames that each of our fruits and vegetables are available in the state of Michigan. So Amy, when I get these squash home, it, what do I need to do? To, what's my first step with these squash? Well, Becky, I say that the first step, anytime you're walking into a kitchen, is washing your hands, okay? And we all know the rule for washing our hands, mm -hmm. 20 seconds, mm -hmm. in between our fingers, underneath our rings if we have any. Typically, I will remove my rings mm -hmm. when I'm cooking. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go to the sink and wash our hands. We want to make sure that our stations where we're working and our utensils that we're going to be using are also washed. Now, Amy, it, the thing with the winter squash, as we obviously talked about, we don't eat the external rind. What is the safety that we need to take into place or consider when we're um, using these in our kitchens? Well, Becky, with all fresh fruits and vegetables, we want to make sure that they're washed. Even though we're not eating the exterior of the winter squash, if I were to run my knife through the exterior of the squash into the flesh and without washing it, there's a possibility that I could bring that bacteria from the outside into the part that I'm eating. So it's a must and it's that we wash everything that we're eating, whether we're eating the outside of it or not. So what I do, Becky, is I have a handy dandy 
fruit and vegetable brush, a vegetable brush, or vigorously brushing it with your hands on a running water will do the same trick. Becky, after we wash these, we want to dry these with another single-use towel because anytime we're working with something that's wet like that, there's potential for cutting ourselves because it's slippery. These winter squash with their hard exterior um, rind, you, you, you said you had a tip for how to cut that. I do, I okay. do. An Could easy, an easy way, Becky, to make sure that we aren't harming ourselves with our knives. And for those of you that aren't real comfortable using a knife on a hard squash like this, what we're gonna do is take a fork and poke some holes in it, just like we would a baked potato to allow the steam to escape. We don't need a lot of them, but enough of them. Mm -hmm. So, and then we're gonna put this in the microwave from three to five minutes to soften the outer shell. So Amy, I think that we're done now. And what we've done is we've left it in the microwave long enough for it to cool off so that when I've washed my hands mm -hmm. and now I can touch it with my bare hands, clean hands being the operative word there, and then we'll bring it right over to our clean cutting surface. And I am ready also. Thank you, Becky. First thing, and today what we're going to do is a squash apple casserole. So um, when we're looking at our butternut squash, this is the neck, and this is what the part I call the bulb. And all your seeds are going to be in the bottom part of the butternut squash. So, but we are going to use the flesh after we take the seeds out of this, because I don't like to waste any part of the vegetable. Excellent. So the first part we want to do, Becky, is take off, and the reasoning, microwaving it, is because this makes it softer to cut. So you're not going to have all that wrenching that you find with your winter squashes that so many people are afraid to buy winter squashes because they are hard to cut. So we've just eliminated that, haven't we? Excellent kitchen uh, tip. Yes. Thank you, Becky. So we're going to want to cut off. Our tip. We're going to want to cut off, there we go, our end. It's going to do what it wants to do. And we can discard these over in our bowl that we have ready. Becky, would you like to read the recipe with me so that we know what we have? Because sure. one of the things you want to do before you're cooking is to make sure you have all your ingredients in front of you Excellent so that point. you're not running in between. Excellent point. So, Amy, what we've got is for our squash apple casserole, we are going to um, put in two and a half cups of winter squash or our butternut squash. And then we're also going to put in one and a half cups of apples. So this is going to be an excellent fruit and vegetable dish. And then we're just going to sprinkle on a little bit of nutmeg and a little bit of cinnamon. A half a teaspoon of nutmeg and a one teaspoon of cinnamon to be specific. Sounds good. So we're going to assemble all of our ingredients so that we know that we have them on hand. And then we will get started with our recipe. Um, Becky, we just pulled this out of the microwave and now I'm going to cut the rind off. All right. Okay. It isn't going to be perfect, but it does help when you do microwave. It softens the edge enough that it's not so scary when we're taking off that outer skin. And then after we remove the rind, mm -hmm. for our recipe, we're going to be um, cutting this into chunks, correct? That's correct, correct, because we're going to layer the chunks of squash, chunks of apple, and then put the seasonings on top. Excellent. Oops. Okay, so. And how many cups do we need of the squash, Becky? We need two and a half cups of winter squash. Okay, and so now I'm going to... Cut through my squash. And it's always a good idea for knife safeties and for your finger safeties is to place the flat surface on the cutting board so that we don't slip and roll and slide around. Sure, Okay, makes sense. Let me 
move this one out of the way because we might not need that one. And as you can see, all the seeds are stuck inside too, but we'll use this at a later time or if we need the flesh for the recipe because we need to measure it out. So Amy, as we're, as we're preparing this recipe, tell me a little bit about the ben health benefits of this recipe. Well, it's full of vitamin A. It's one half cup of dark orange squash is 100% of your daily recommended vitamin A. Fantastic. You know, and what this, what this recipe will give us is six servings. How many servings of vegetables and fruits should somebody, an adult, um, try to get in their diet every day? Five a day is what's recommended, or two and a half cups of vegetables every day. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, so, and, and that could vary depending on physical activity and... Um, any kind of um, correct dietary the, needs that correct. somebody might have. Correct. The recommendations that I just gave you are based on 2,000 calories. Mm -hmm. um, you might be more, you might be less. At my age, I'm a little less than 2,000 calories, but I still like to eat my fruits and vegetables. Oh, fantastic. So squash is a major part of my diet. Mm -hmm. Also, um, they've recommended that uh, a variety of colors in your vegetables on a weekly basis mm -hmm. is recommended also. So I'm going to go ahead and start measuring out our squash and we needed two and a half cups you said? Yes, two and a half right. cups. So if we want to layer these, did it say to start with the apples or the squash first? It said to actually start with the squash and okay. end, with the, end with the apples on top. Okay, so there's one cup And we don't have to use the butternut squash for this recipe. We could also use acorn squash or Hubbard squash, different varieties of squash, and it may be um, based on somebody's preference if they like one squash over another. That is correct. That is correct. You don't have to use the butternut squash on this one. So, okay, we have our squash prepared. I am not going to waste this, mm -hmm. okay? I'm going to store this for a later recipe that I might use. Mm -hmm. um, Typically, we're going to store this no more than three to five days in the refrigerator. We mm -hmm. want to keep this covered, and I could use it for another recipe or another meal. Okay. Now, you bring up storage, an excellent mm -hmm. point. How long could our winter squash, if we bring it home from the farmer's market or the grocery store, how long could I keep that at my home? You can keep that up to three months, if not longer, as long as it stays hard mm -hmm. um, and there aren't any dents in it or mold on it. Mm -hmm. It will stay three months or longer. Uh, if you keep it in a cool, dry place, mm -hmm. anywhere from 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So you're saying that about winter squash, but that's going to be a little bit different um, criteria for the, in, for the summer squash, correct? That's correct. I would use these as soon as they are picked or as soon as you bring them home. Mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. So now the next thing that we want to do is that we want to add apples. How many cups of apples do we need, Becky? The recipe calls for one and a half cups of apples. Correct. And we can use a Macintosh or maybe a Granny Smith. I would say whatever your preference is on that and the availability of them also. Mm -hmm. But with the apple, just like with any other fresh fruits and vegetables, we want to wash these first also. Another okay? good point. So I'm going to take this to the sink and with my scrub brush, that I specifically use just for vegetables. Mm -hmm. Or fruits. Or fruits, mm -hmm. thank you, yes. And I'm going to make sure that the entire surface is clean. Okay. And with a single use towel, we can dry that. Or sometimes I air dry them also, mm -hmm. okay, on top of a towel. So, I never remove the skin, Becky. You know, even if I'm making an apple pie, apple cobbler, anything, I always leave the skin on. Correct. I do also because the benefits are what? Fiber. Fiber, mm -hmm. actually, yes. So I am going to leave the skin on, and because I'm leaving the skin on and I only want to remove the core, I'm going to use one of these handy-dandy tools. Okay. Now, Amy, if I don't have one of those at home, can mm -hmm. I use just a regular knife you to cut it You certainly can. You certainly can. And the way I do it is I make a square. With my knife tipped down, I'm going to come along 
like this, and cut right around the core, keeping my fingers back, like that. And then I have the core that I can discard. Excellent. All right. And then at this point, what we'd want to do is just dice or chop up our vegetable or our apple mm -hmm. that we're going to use. So how many cups do we need, Becky? One and a half cups of apples One and will a half be cup added to our two and a half cups of winter squash. Okay. Well, layered. Layered, okay. Well, we can layer them with our fingers, I think, when we get them in there. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it has to be exact, you know. So we have one and a half cup of apples. And there, you know what, Becky, I'm going to add these in because there's they're right just a there. couple in, they're right there, and I don't like to waste. Okay. And Amy, I, I have made this recipe before, and I just, I actually added what I thought was um, going to meet the needs of my taste buds. And Correct. so if, if I uh, wanted a little more apple taste, I could definitely add a few more apples, or with the squash, I could add a little more And that's squash. the beauty of making food at home, isn't it, Becky, yes, it is, is that we can do it to our taste. Mm -hmm. So... Okay, we need seasonings, and it recommends nutmeg and cinnamon. Yes. And how much nutmeg do they want me to put in there, Becky? One and a half, or excuse me, a half a teaspoon of nut, nutmeg okay. and uh, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Okay, so I have a half a teaspoon, and I'm just going to shake that around. Okay. Set that aside. And one teaspoon of cinnamon. And it's a level teaspoon. I did shake it out. Now, does it recommend that we mix this together or just, just to do it on the top? It actually tells us to sprinkle it right over the top. Right over the top, okay. All right, we will do that. And then we're ready to pop it in the oven. Yeah. Correct. And the nice thing is with this, it, it is very easy to put together, mm -hmm. very simple ingredients, mm -hmm. and something that can easily be um, assembled very quickly. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do after we do this is cover it with aluminum foil. Okay. And just for ease of demonstration, what we have done, we'll pop that in the oven. Okay. And then we already have one prepared. And the USDA recipe finder, the United States Department of Agriculture, has a recipe finder that you can uh, access online. And it, if you go to that uh, website, you'll be able to type in any ingredient that you have on hand to see what kind of recipes are available to you. And with that, we did um, enter the recipe finder and found this recipe. And actually, the cost for this recipe is very minimal. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it tells us that this is in the average range of about $1.55 per recipe, so about 26 cents per serving. Mm -hmm. So there's six servings that are actually um, going to come out of this recipe. And it's nutritious for you, too. Yes. And voila. And voila.